Welcome you to today's program of uh, what we call Africa Arise. My name is David White, and I'm the pastor of the Gathering Church in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. And uh, we are excited. We have great anticipation in coming to share with you God's Word. The Bible offers not only hope in this hour in which we live, but gives us the way to know the one who is the author of our hope, Jesus Christ, God's only son. And uh, so we're excited. We're going to uh, get in the word in just a little bit. Then at the end, I'm going to pray with you. I believe many are going to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, all over the world, people are discovering that God is real, that it's not just a story in a book. He's real. And also they're discovering that he's really moving all over the earth in places where they thought maybe God wasn't ever going to move again, but he's moving by his spirit. He said, I will, the scripture says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And then we know people are discovering he's moving in their individual lives. He's moving in nations. You know, this move of God that is happening is not about religion. It's about a relationship, relationship with God Almighty, and we come into that relationship through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I'm going to pray, open the program, and then we're going to hear a song so we can worship the Lord together from my friend Dustin. And then as we focus on the Lord, we'll come back after and get into God's Word. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to get into the Word of God, which is forever settled in heaven, and is the truth, and gives us the way to know the Father. Bless this time. Touch people's lives. Do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heartbeat and 
Throughout history, we read stories of men and women that God used greatly to accomplish great acts, things that God led them to do, and, uh, but there was one group that goes way back into history, and they were called the Apostles of the Possible. They had settled it among themselves that we believe As far as we're concerned, that our God can do things that may be impossible with man, but nothing is impossible with our God. And I believe that's what God's raising up again in Africa. Men and women, young and old, that believe that nothing is impossible with their God. And that's the kind of God that we serve. We're going to pray in a little bit, and we're going to believe for miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, This is actually part two from a message that we began last week, looking at the character, the nature of our God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so when you look into the Old Testament, you're seeing the character, the nature of God, which is reflected, obviously, in the nature of his Son. And we shared that scripture, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. That means whatever he did, and when he was on the earth, he's doing today through his church, through people that have surrendered to him, and he'll do for all of eternity. We opened up this uh, program by reminding us that all over the world, people are discovering that God is real. He's not just a, a story. It's not a story written in a book. He's real. God is real. And he's really moving all over the face of the earth. Now, we know there's great darkness emerging around the world in nations. There's great upheaval. There are great challenges. There are things happening that are hard, difficult, demanding that we have faith. But our God is really moving in spite of what is happening in the world. He's moving even greater, but even All of that, he'll move in your life. We believe he'll move in your life tonight. Now, the providential hand of God, this speaks of how God is moving in nations, individuals, regions of the world, families, even though whatever's coming against them seem to want to take take them one way, God's providential hand is directing them to a desired end, his purpose, his greatest will. His will for their lives. Now, we looked in this psalm and we saw that last week, I'll just review before we carry on, that God builds up Jerusalem. He builds up his people. And we said that Jesus was a carpenter. And we know, I'm I'm sure many of you are carpenters. You're master craftsmen at whatever you build. Well, Jesus is a master craftsman. There's a scripture over in the book of Ephesians, it says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God planned beforehand that we should walk in them. So he built in us something that has a desire. We have a desire to want to please him. And he wrote in our hearts the works that you and I are to walk out in this life, 
the will of the Father. And so he's been building us even before we were born. And uh, he's, what he builds will last forever. We said last week, Jesus made a promise. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. You can't lock down the church. You can't silence the church. You can't push away, close down, silence the church forever. The church will rise up. And it has all through history. And then he gathers together. We spoke about how there will come a day that all the nations, those who know the Lord from all the nations of the world, every tribe, tongue, and people will shout out salvation belongs to our God. And there'll be a great company of those that have been gathered from the earth to Jesus Christ. We spoke about how Satan is the great scatterer. But Jesus is the great gatherer, and he gathers us to himself through faith, through salvation, and then we're gathered together as a family of God. I've got a great family in Uganda and in Tanzania and, and uh, into Congo where we've been doing these radio programs now for well over two years, and uh, though I've never been there Except on Zoom, you know, we have these discipleship gatherings where they set up screens and uh, put out speakers, and many people gather. And I can tell you, I have a great family, the family of God, and this family is going to grow and extend through all of Africa. And God is a great uniter, a great, he's the one that brings people together. And then he said in that scripture, he heals the brokenhearted, and so many today They're going through heartache, tragedies, trials. Some are hard to imagine the people that, the things that people are going through. But God is a great heart mender. He's the one that can put the pieces of our life, though they've been shattered, he can put them all back together again. Now, I want to pick up now, back in Psalm 147, and we're going to look at what else and how it describes the character and the nature of our God. And it says in verse 4 of that psalm, he counts the number of the stars and he calls them all by name. Now, every child of God has their own story, the testimony of their life when they surrendered their life to Jesus Christ and uh, how God has moved in their lives. I, as a young boy... I was attending a a summer camp, and uh, I was convicted because of the preaching of the gospel. And I wanted to know, I wanted to know, was this God real? I wanted to know Jesus Christ, and I, the counselor told me, you just need to go out somewhere and call on him and confess you need a Savior. And uh, that's all I knew as a nine-year-old boy. I knew I was a sinner. That didn't take, no one had to convince me there. I knew I had I'd failed God. I wasn't living the best that he required, so I needed forgiveness. And so I went out, and I knelt down in this field, and I looked up to the heavens, and uh, it was a sunny day that day, and uh, I, I just said, God, I need a Savior. I believe Jesus is the Son of God, that he died, he, he rose from the dead. I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart. Something very simple like that. And I can tell you from that very moment, Jesus Christ came into my life. And there was something that happened there in that field that day. Well, years later, I guess something happened. I I used to, I always loved to look up into the heavens, especially at night with all the stars in the skies. And this is what the scripture says, that God calls the stars by name, he knows the number. Now, let me tell you what happened. One night I was, years later, seeking direction, wanting to know the will of God in a certain matter. And when you need to know wisdom, when you need to know the will of God, the best thing to do is to go to God. He's the author of wisdom and he'll guide your steps. And so I was out seeking the Lord. I said, God, if this is your will, let a star streak across the sky a shooting star. So I asked him, and I had faith, and then I waited. I'm looking up into the sky, and I waited, 
and I waited, and I kept waiting, and you know what happened? Nothing. There was no shooting star. But you know, I didn't need a shooting star. If, I, if I'd known about this scripture, that would have been all I needed to know. All those stars in the sky, the galaxies, the solar systems, stars we can't see with the human eye. You can't even see with telescopes today because they're so far into the next solar system. But God knows them all. He knows them by name. If I had known that, then that's enough to know that my God will direct my ways. He will guide me. You know what else this verse tells me? If he knows how many stars there are in the sky and he knows them all by name, that means he cares for me. He cares for me. There's a scripture over in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up at the proper time. Our job is to humble ourselves. Get low. Say, God, I need you. That's humility when you say, God, I need a Savior. I can't save myself. I don't have the answers. I need you to guide me and direct me. That's part of what it means to humble yourself. But that scripture goes on to say, cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. That's true humility. Not carrying your own, your own cares and your burdens all through your life, but casting them onto the Lord and saying, God, I'll leave it in your hands, and then walk away and trust that he will be faithful. There are many people, they're all over the world. They don't know that God cares. They, feel, they wonder, does anybody care? Does anybody really care about me and what I'm going through? Everyone goes through times like that. Well, I can tell you, God cares. And if you'll humble yourself, call on him, you'll find that he is the one that loves you more than anybody. He cares more about where you are, where where you're going, where you've been, what you're going through. And then that scripture says that he's mighty in power. Mighty in power. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds, counts the stars. And he's great and mighty in power. You know what that means? It means he's mighty in power. There's a story in the Old Testament of Jehoshaphat. He was a king over God's people. And one day he looked out over the sea. And the scripture is clear and describes how a great multitude, I guess it was a great multitude of ships that were coming against him from beyond the sea. It's what that scripture says. And it says that Jehoshaphat feared, but his fears led him to seek the Lord. And here's what he confessed. He said, oh, our God, will you not judge them? Referring to the enemy that was at his doorstep. But then he said, We are powerless against this great multitude that is coming against us from beyond the sea, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. And then as Jehoshaphat led his people to seek the Lord, God raised up the answers and gave them the strategy to see the victory over their enemies that were they really outnumbered them and was far greater as far as they could see with their own eyes. And I tell you, our God is the same. He cares for you. He is mighty in power. Maybe he's just waiting for you to confess, God, I'm powerless before this great enemy that I'm facing. Maybe as a leader of a nation, you're facing financial struggles. You cannot, you know, people can't understand the decisions you're having to make. Just say, God, I confess we're powerless. There's nothing we can do and in and of our own strength. We need you, God, and you're mighty in power. Now, God's power speaks of how he, he has power to save. There are people today that think they've done so, so many things, things that are so bad, God surely couldn't forgive them. Well, I can tell you, surely he can That's why Jesus died on the cross. Sin is sin. And he covered our sins on the cross. He has power to heal and deliver. I don't understand that verse. It's over in Psalm 103. It says he forgives all of our iniquities, which means all of our sin, all of our transgression, all of our rebellions. We can go daily 
and confess our sin. He's faithful and just. But it goes on to say that he will heal all of our diseases. I don't understand how all that works. I just know that he is who he says he is. God is not a man that he should lie. That's what the Bible literally says. You ever notice men lie to you? Women, they may lie to you. God never will lie. And uh, he said, I'm mighty to heal. I'll forgive all of your sin. I'll heal all of your disease. And then it's power to, to give us authority over the powers of darkness ourselves. You know, there's a scripture over in John chapter 16. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin and uh, of righteousness and speaks about the righteousness of Jesus and that the ruler of this world has been judged. Now, the ruler of this world, Satan is the prince of this. He's the God of the world system. He's not God. He's not Lord of all. God is heaven, Lord of heaven and the earth. But Satan has a limited amount of power over the world system. But every believer, every believer in Christ Jesus has authority over the powers of darkness, over Satan. The Bible says, draw near to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. He has to flee. The scripture says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. And then there's power to overcome our own weakness. When we're weak, he is strong. We give our weakness to him, and he gives us strength. And then power to obey his will, to fulfill his purpose. You know, we think, God, how am I ever going to do the will of God? I'm just a man or a woman. It's because of the God that lives in you and enables you to do his will. There's a scripture that says, my people volunteer in the day of his power. And I can tell you in Africa, men and women are volunteering all over all through the nations in the day of his power. Then he goes on and says his understanding is infinite. I remember hearing a definition of what it means to understand that I'll never forget. It means to stand under the person that you're trying to understand and see what they're going through. From their perspective, you stand under them. Now, who do you know that can really understand you? No one. No one really understands except him, and his understanding is infinite. You'll never run out of understanding. God will understand. He stands under. He's the one that can see from our perspective, and he lifts us up. That's what the Scripture says after that. He lifts us up, and all of those that call upon him, he delivers, and he's mighty, most of all, to save. Now, I want to pray right now. You can read Psalm 147. That psalm is chalk full of great inspiration and hope for this hour. But it all begins by knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to lead many of you in a prayer. I believe the Holy Spirit has been convicting you of sin and that you need a Savior. The Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. So pray something like this. You mean it in your heart. Say, dear God, I need a Savior. I believe in you. I confess I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me. I choose to turn from sin. And I turn my life over to you. I call upon you. And I receive you by faith. As my Lord and Savior. Now my friend the Bible says. If you call upon his name you'll be saved. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. If you prayed that prayer. Contact us here. Email us at I trust Jesus. That's all small letters. I trust Jesus 2023. The numbers. I trust Jesus 2023 at gmail.com. Tell us your name. Where you where you live, your city, your nation. And I want to pray right now for God to touch many of you that are sick. You're going through very difficult things. God is able to save. He's also able to deliver and heal and rescue miracles. God, I pray for power. I pray and rebuke the devourer. I bind every sickness and disease in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, for release of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch people's lives right now, that they would be raised up, lifted up. God, things that look impossible, and they are with man. We thank you they are possible with our God. And I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit 
that's touching men and women right now, all over, in many places. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you, God, that you not only hear our prayer, but you answer our prayers, and you're answering those prayers right now. We give you all the glory. God bless you, my friend. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you again next week. God bless you. 